There's an endless road to rediscover.
You didn't say it was done. Coming. That would be cool. I was looking at apartments. Found a really nice one, but it's too far for you to look at. Well, it's the same distance for you, but it's more country roads instead of highway. We'll see, though. But well, that means it's harder in the winter. Uh, it's only an hour if you take 90. It's an hour if you take 90. It's 60, 50 minutes if you take the other one. I guess it's a little over our budget, never mind.
your niece's throat from here to here. I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed animal food trough whopper. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Is there someone else up there we could talk to? No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. I'll wave my private parts at your aunties! In the name of Robert of the House Baratheon, the first of his... This is a philosophical statement and would take about ten minutes to read, so I'll not do that. Uh, one of the first things that a child learns in a healthy family is trust. And I trust what you have said that you will read this. It's very important to me. I care deeply about children. My first children... Will it make you happy if you read it? I'd just like to talk about it, if all it's right, all right. Sir. Okay. My first children's program was on WQED 15 years ago, and its budget was $30. Now, with the help of the Sears Roebuck Foundation and National Educational Television, as well as all of the affiliated stations. Each station pays to show our program. It's a unique kind of funding in educational television. With this help, now our program has a budget of $6,000. It may sound like quite a difference, but $6,000 pays for less than two minutes of cartoon two minutes of animated, what I sometimes say, bombardment. I'm very much concerned, as I know you are, about what's being delivered to our children in this country. And I've worked in the field of child development for six years now, trying to understand the inner needs of children. We deal with such things as as the inner drama of childhood. We don't have to bop somebody over the head to make him, to, to make drama on the screen. We deal with such things as getting a haircut or the feelings about brothers and sisters and the kind of anger that arises in simple family situations. And we speak to it constructively. How long a program is it? It's a half hour every day. Most channels schedule it in the, in the noontime as well as in the evening. Uh, WETA here has scheduled it in the late afternoon. Could we get a copy of this so that we can see it? And maybe not today, but I'd like to see the program. I'd like very much for you I'd to like see. I'd like to see the program itself, or any one of them, you see. We, we made a hundred programs for EEN, the Eastern Educational Network, and then when the money ran out, people in Boston and Pittsburgh and Chicago all came to the fore and said, we've got to have more of this neighborhood expression of care. And this is what, this is what I give. I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, you've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. And I feel that if we in public television can only 
make it clear that feelings are mentionable and manageable, we will have done a great service for mental health. Uh, I think that it's much more dramatic that two men could be working out their feelings of anger, much more dramatic than showing something of gunfire. I'm constantly concerned about what our children are seeing. And for 15 years I have tried in this country and Canada to present what I feel is a meaningful expression of care. Do you I, narrate it? I'm the host, yes. And I do all the puppets and I write all the music and I write all the scripts. Well, I'm supposed to be a pretty tough guy and this is the first time I've had goosebumps for the last two days. <laughs> Well, I'm grateful, not only for your goosebumps, but for your interest in, in our kind of communication. Could I tell you the words of one of the songs which I feel is very important? Yes. This has to do with that good feeling of control, which I feel that the children need to know is there. And it starts out, what do you do with the mad that you feel? And that first line came straight from a child. I work with children do, doing puppets in, in very personal communication with small groups. What do you do with the mad that you feel? When you feel so mad you could bite. When the whole wide world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems very right. What do you do? Do you punch a bag? Do you pound some clay or some dough? Do you round up friends for a game of tag or see how fast you go? It's great to be able to stop when you've planned a thing that's wrong and be able to do something else instead and think this song. I can stop when I want to, can stop when I wish, can stop, stop, stop any time. And what a good feeling to feel like this and know that the feeling is really mine know that there's something deep inside that helps us become what we can for a girl can be someday a lady and a boy can be someday a man i think it's wonderful i think it's wonderful <clears throat> looks like you just earned the 20 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> with his friends but he's also a young actor and today we hired him to help us make a point we asked him to take a drive around town with his mother of course since he's not nearly old enough to drive a car we pass shops where he isn't old enough to work the register then we stop at the convenience store to see Jack try to buy beer the cashier can't believe he even tried at the next door, Jack tries to buy cigarettes, with no luck. I'm so sorry I can't see my Later, he strikes out trying to buy Racy Magazine. All right, okay, thank you. And then lottery tickets. Can I get a couple of scratch-offs? How old are you? You have to ID? 13. You what? I'm 13. You can't get no scratch-off, babe. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's laughable to everyone here, the idea that we'd ever expose a 13-year-old to the dangers of a lottery ticket. But then we arrive here at the gun show. It should shoot pretty good for you. I'll take it. Within minutes, the 13-year-old easily and legally bought a 22 caliber rifle from a private seller and walked away with it. It's not excite you like they used to. Then come on down to Fur Kids Furry Animal Emporium. We've got everything you could possibly want in a furry life companion. Come see our fine selection of quality cats. If you like black cats, we got the blackest cats you've ever seen. It's like midnight inside a coffin over here. If you like sleepy kitties, we got the sleepiest kitties you've ever seen. If you don't like tails? No problem. Get a cat without one. All of our cats are self-cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. 2016 models are compatible with Windows. So how long have you been waiting to get adopted? <laughs> you 
like hungry cats? We got some of the hungriest cats you've ever seen. Seriously, we can't get them to stop eating. How are you so small? You never stop eating, fatty. Our cats are very enthusiastic about going home with you. We're practically giving them away. We have a fine selection of exotic cats from faraway places that I can't pronounce, like Siamese. <laughs> oh god, they're everywhere. <laughs> Won't somebody come and take some of these cats off of me so I don't get smothered alive? You ever feel like you just keep going around and around in circles but you never get anywhere? Maybe it's time to adopt a foster cat. Does anyone have a cat I could hold? I mean, we're shooting a commercial. Cat's just not doing it for you? You should try out this new thing called dogs. Seriously, they're really cool. You should try it. Ask about our exclusive models available only through Fur Kids certified stores. You like big cats? We got the biggest cat you'll ever have. This here is one of the biggest cats you're ever going to see. Okay. Hi, kitty. So what you need, fam? I need a battery kitty. Yeah, I got you. Be sure to stop by and pick up some officially licensed Fur Kids merchandise. We've got hats. Vests. Long sleeve t-shirts. Hey, and whatever one of these is. Be the first kid on your block to collect all four. We also offer a fine selection of coupons, bumper stickers, and notepads. What? You're in the arms of an angel far away.
Charles IV, King of Bohemia and Holy Roman Emperor, had a long and successful reign. The empire he ruled from Prague expanded, and his subjects lived in peace and prosperity. When the emperor died, the whole empire.
Jesus, look where you're going. Be quick about it. What the? You thieving magpie. I wasn't stealing anything. I see a thief. Guard! What? Guard! Guard! Come here quick. There's a thief over there. You there. Stop. Surrender. You'll have to answer for your law breaking. Bring it on. Someone saw you stealing. This definitely won't come cheap. You'll learn crime doesn't pay. Damn it. Here's your coin, then. All right. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. Give me back the stolen goods and show me what else you have on you. Be a bit more careful. I heard you had a fight with Fritz and Matthew. Heathens. So it was what you the they fought with? Yes, it was me. And I hope I'll never have to see those wastrels again. They deserve to be ousted, but the debt? How are they ever going to pay it? I really don't care. Let them live in penury. Brutes. Isn't that a little unchristian? You wouldn't want personal spite to ruin their lives, would you? I'm not going to stand here and be lectured on what it is and isn't Christian. Who do you think you are? I'm here again about Fritz and Matthew. I don't want to talk about them. How much do they owe? A lot. Since it's you... Well now, a little more and we'll shake on it. Well, well, look at you. I've been sent here from Talmberg. I'm to speak with the one responsible for construction. Gotta be the master builder. Or with our brother, the overseer. What matter is it you're here about? It has to do with the stone for construction. Ah, then that's a matter of supply. You'll want to talk to the overseer. He knows more about that sort of thing. His study's right above us, more or less. Go up the steps to the left and then head back in this direction, almost the whole way. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Divish. I'd like to have a look around the spot where the accident happened. And why is Sir Divish interested in that regrettable accident? 
He'd like to know what role the masonry had in it, or at least its quality. I guess it played a crucial role, but I don't intend to stand in the way of your investigation. I've already made sure the poor man was well taken care of, and that's enough for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Who's in charge of purchasing materials for the construction? Mainly it's me. I pay the fees and make arrangements for delivery, but those in charge of the actual building take care of the rest. I'm not knowledgeable when it comes to the quality of stone. They had the red stone delivered from a long way off. They take care of storage as well? Yes, but usually whatever arrives is used up straight away. The construction is in full progress. Do you remember when they brought the last delivery of stone? Yes. It rained a lot that week, so they let the carriage sit right outside of the gate on the other side of the wall. It took some time before it was dry enough for further transport. And there wasn't anything strange about it? A little strange, I suppose. Usually they bring us a large block of stone, which the builders cut to size. But this time it was a number of smaller pieces. No one complained. They probably saw it as less work. I heard that you were late with your payment to the Talmberg Quarry. That's true. We ourselves had late payments and it took some time before we gathered enough money to pay. But that's happened in the past. My respects to you. The Overseer sent me. You're to show me the place where the accident happened. <sighs> like I've got time to spare to show you round. He should have done it himself. Why do you want to know, anyway?
because of the Talmberg stone. If they really are delivering poor quality material, then there should be consequences. I'd be interested in what kind. But I'm guessing the Overseer likes the idea of cheaper stone, right? And have you noticed anything else going on? Of course. It's a construction site. Things are always going wrong. The men are always complaining and the work isn't being done fast enough. <laughs> so it's just like any other building work? Essentially, yes. Occasionally someone brings in bad wood or a man cuts off his thumb and blames it on a bad omen. And then there's all these rumors going round. I'd be interested to know what the men talk about. Who's been stealing? Which men from the monastery go to visit women? How the work's going? Normal things. It's only the talk about the curse that's not in the normal run of things. And then there's that devil's skull they dug up. Who's stealing? Could someone be stealing the stone? According to the rumors, everyone from the abbot and the custodian down to the lowest laborer. It's like with whores and dice. There's no protection against slander. And something gets lost here and there, that's true. But nobody stole any stone. There wouldn't be any left if every man here started helping himself, would there? Hey, Abby. Yeah. Do you have any, um, index cards here, or are they all at school? Here. Are they just in your school box? Yeah. All right. You talked about the Devil's Skull. I did. They say it was found in the hole dug for the foundation of the scaffolding. They moved it so it would do its harm elsewhere. But I wasn't there to see it, so I don't know. And who might know more? Shouldn't you be investigating the stone? Leshek's in charge of the scaffolding, so ask him if you really have to know. He might tell you something. Where's the scene of the accident? It didn't happen on the main site. It was at the outbuilding next to the church. Right under the long stairs before the entrance door. Ask my assistant who's in charge there. You'll easily recognize him. He dresses up like he owns the place. Can you tell me something about the poor wretch with the broken head? Yarek, he was a decent... Who's in charge of the place where the accident happened? Me. I watch over everything here, and when necessary, I go to see my master. He's kept busy enough with the construction of the church. And are you responsible for checking the stone? <sighs> yes. We tested what load they could handle and how much they crumbled during dressing. But some of them must have been more weathered than we thought. Where were you when it happened? I'm not even sure. Somewhere else. I ran over when I heard the screaming, and they were already taking him away. Did you notice anything suspicious? No, I didn't. These things happen with great building works. It wasn't the first time, and God forgive me for saying it, but it won't be the last. Are you serious?
There is even more of the bad stone up here. I hope the rest of it won't be falling on people's heads too. stone fell on him here. You can still see the marks. This has to be the stone that hit him. I'll take a piece of it. Maybe someone will recognize it. so pleased about all of a sudden. My respect for you, sir. I heard you found something. It's true. I dug it up during work. I then ran away with it and got rid of it so the others wouldn't see. But rumours spread anyway. And what was it that nobody was supposed to see? What do you think? A demon skull. Here. On holy ground. In the middle of the monastery. But it was outside the monastery walls. Where exactly? Is there anything else there worth seeing? Nothing but scaffolding. We started digging there to set foundations for extending it. And are you sure it was a devil's skull? I know what I saw. I can recognize a human skull. And this one had horns. Like the devil, besides. That thing gave off a diabolical stink. And where is it now? What did you do with it? I... I was taking it down to the river to throw it in. Only, I dropped it at the top of the slope and it rolled downhill. The devil alone knows where it ended up. Hmm. I'll see if I can find it. Did Joachim get that job done for you then? Don't even remind me. I've never seen such a shoddy piece of work in my life. I had to get it put right after him. Believe it. Everyone else praises him to the skies. They all say he's a fine craftsman. If he did it for free, he'd be overcharging. Damn it. I was going to get him to do something. Raymond.
God be with you, good sir. So what is it you know? I've come for a couple of
out. There's one of those bastards. So you want my money? Just try and take it. Want something? Get going. For God's sake, there, over there. you think you are? Didn't I tell you you've no business here? Well, you won't forget this in a hurry, because it'll take a nice pile of coin to fix it. Just my luck. Look, I can't tell you anymore. The fate of the whole empire hangs in the balance between King Wenceslas and King Sigismund. High politics, you know? Not a peep to anyone. Well... I thought, that is, I, I had no idea. If that's how it is, of course you may go. Surrender. You committed a violation. You're under arrest.
again. Oh, I'm sorry for the coffee shop. Stay though, because my laptop was being funny last time I went. Let's see. What else do you want to do today? Hey, Abby? Abby? Can you turn the volume down just a touch?
You After here, you fucker. I can see you not from around here. We've had no one coming here lately but bastards. I wish I was able to swim.
What are you doing here? Tired of life, oh. are you? Okay. Gone weak in the knees, have you? Uh, is that all you got? No surrender. We finish what we started. You beast! Jesus, look where you're going. 